Good afternoon students. Today we are going to discuss a very important topic that is called edema. We will cover the following objectives in today's topic. First we will define edema and we will see its various types, explain the pathophysiology and causes of intracellular and extracellular edema. After that we will describe safety factors that normally prevent edema and explain the importance of these safety factors and then we will dis define and discuss fluids in potential spaces of the body. So how edema is defined? Edema is simply defined as the presence of excess fluid in the body tissues. Okay. So it could be of two types, intracellular or extracellular. Means there could be accumulation of excess fluid either inside the cell or outside the cells. When it is accumulation of excess fluid outside the cells or in the interstitial space and it is called as extracellular edema. So what could be the possible pathophysiology of intracellular edema? Remember that whenever there is depression of the metabolic systems of the tissues and lack of adequate nutrition to the cells, it leads to development of intracellular edema. If you remember from the previous lectures, we have discussed that whenever there is changes in the osmolarity across the cell membrane, it leads to either shrinkage or swelling of the cells. So what is actually happening that when there is depression of the metabolic system or there is lack of adequate nutrition, there is lack of ATPs or lack of oxygen, it leads to inefficiency of the active pumps on the cell membrane like the sodium potassium pump is not functioning well. It is not pumping three sodium out of the cell and two potassium inside the cell. So when the three sodium are not pumped outside the cell, it leads to accumulation of excessive sodium inside the cell leading to a state of hyperosmolarity. So you remember that whenever there is hyperosmolarity, fluid is going to move inside the cell depending on the principles of osmosis leading to development of intracellular edema. Okay, the second type is extracellular edema. Uh, it could be because of leakage of fluid and failure of the lymphatic pump. So uh, we are going to discuss uh, these two factors in detail. Um, and you will see or you will recall from your previous knowledge of cardiovascular system how these factors are going to cause edema. So this is a picture showing development of edema on the face. Extracellular edema, remember that it is accumulation of excessive fluid in the interstitial space. So it means that the fluid is coming out of the capillaries into the interstitium or the fluid is being unable to go back into the circulation by the lymphatic system. So if you remember uh, the concept of capillary filtration, that is the leakage of fluid, capillary filtration is dependent on two things. One is the capillary filtration coefficient and second is net filtration pressure. This is just a revision of your previous concepts. So capillary filtration is dependent on the porosity or permeability of the capillaries. More the permeability, more will be filtration of fluid outside the capillaries. And the second important thing is the number of the capillaries. If a number of the capillaries representing the surface area. So measure of the capacity of capillary membrane to filter water from for a given net filtration pressure. Second important factor determining capillary filtration is net filtration pressure that is dependent on the Starling forces. So what are the Starling forces? You do remember that there are four important factors. One is the capillary pressure, plasma colloid osmotic pressure, interstitial fluid pressure, and interstitial fluid colloid osmotic pressure. So disruption in the normal physiology of all these factors lead all these four starling forces leads to the development of edema. We will discuss various causes one by one. So the first one is the capillary pressure, capillary hydrostatic pressure. Whenever the capillary hydro hydrostatic pressure is increased, it leads to, whenever this pressure is increased, it leads to filtration of fluid outside the capillaries into the interstitium. So what are the various diseases or causes of this? Number one is excessive kidney retention of salt and water. This could be because of acute or chronic kidney failure or aldosterone excess. Aldosterone is a hormone that leads to reabsorption of sodium and water from the kidneys. So whenever these two things are happening, 
it leads to excessive kidney retention of salt and water leading to increased in the capillary pressure and thus excessive filtration of fluid outside the capillaries into the interstitium leading to the development of edema the second factor that leads to increased capillary pressure is decreased arteriolar resistance so the causes are excessive body heat insufficiency of sympathetic nervous system and vasodilator drops then we have another factor another cause of increased capillary pressure that is high venous pressure and venous constriction so whenever there is venous constriction there is pooling up of blood leading to increased capillary pressure so the causes of these could be heart failure venous obstruction or failure of the venous pumps like paralysis of the muscles immobilization of parts of the body and failure of the venous valves okay the second starting force is plasma proteins that determines the plasma colloid osmotic pressure and that keeps the fluid inside the capillaries whenever the plasma proteins are going to decrease it leads to excessive filtration of fluid outside the capillaries so what are various causes of decreased plasma proteins this is loss of proteins in the urine that is nephrotic syndrome loss of protein from skin in case of burns and wounds and failure to produce proteins like uh, liver is a main source of production of plasma proteins so whenever there is liver disease the proteins are not produced then another important factor leading to development of extracellular edema is increased capillary permeability and this could be caused by immune reactions that cause release of histamine then the release of various toxins like you have seen in case of septic shock bacterial infections vitamin deficiency especially vitamin c prolonged ischemia and burns so now we are clear uh, about the first concept leakage of fluid how it leads to the development of edema let's see the second how the lymphatic failure of the lymphatic pump leads to the development of edema as you all know that lymphatics carry the excessive fluid from the interstitial spaces back towards the heart by following this route so whenever there is failure of lymphatic pump or there is blockage of lymph re return that leads to the development of excessive accumulation of excessive fluid in the interstitium the factors that lead to blockage of lymph return could be cancer infections like uh, filaria nematodes like in this case you can see the blockage of lymph return has led to the development of excessive edema then surgery congenital absence or abnormality of the lymphatic vessels okay edema could be classified ago according to the formation of a pit if there is formation of a pit on the skin it is called as pitting edema and if there is no formation of a pit on the skin it is called non pitting edema how we see that we just like on any bony prominence we <clears throat> depress the skin with the help of a finger or thumb and then after removing the finger if there is formation of a pit and that remains there for 5 to 10 seconds then we call it as pitting edema and if there is no if there is a development of pit and that goes away within few within 1 to 2 seconds then we call it as non pitting edema this is non pitting edema so what are the causes of pitting edema it is pregnancy heart failure the varicose veins insect bites and then the causes of non pitting edema includes lymphedema and mixed edema so this picture will help us in differentiating between pitting the differentiating between the pathophysiology of pitting and non pitting edema so as you see over here this is one cell this is another cell and uh, this is the uh, capillary and this is interstitium the interstitial space so this interstitial space has a uh, connective tissue glycosamine and amino glycans proteoglycans fibroblast various cells and forming the ground substance and then we have these small spaces which are called rivulets of free fluid 
whenever there is accumulation of excessive fluid in this space the rivulets of free fluid like in case of heart failure whenever there is excessive filtration of fluid it comes and accumulate in these spaces these spaces becomes enlarged leading to the development of edema so when we depress the skin this fluid is displaced on the sides leading to the development of a pit okay now what happens like in case of mixed edema which occurs in hypothyroidism there is accumulation of excessive connective tissue especially the glycosaminoglycans in this interstitium so whenever there is accumulation of that excessive glycosaminoglycans in this interstitium there is edema but that is of non-pitting type whenever we are depressing the skin there is no formation of pit